Hi everyone, I am Will, and I am so extremely thrilled to welcome you to episode 5 of Built From Scratch. Um, I will uh, at some point not be able to do that on my fingers, but at the moment, I'm excited. Five. Um, this episode is really exciting to me. Um, why is it so exciting? Well, I kept promising that we were going to clean up our code. Um, and, and this is the episode that we're definitely going to do it. Uh, our code has now gotten too gnarly, too complex, too impossible to read that we just can't keep programming unless we do a little bit of cleanup. And while that might seem boring, because in many ways it is boring, it is also just this gigantic, enormous amount of what programming is. Um, the trick of doing anything in Scratch or in any programming language is that doing any individual single thing is really, really easy. Um, and then you do two of them and it's still pretty easy and then you, you know, keep writing your program and then you have hundreds and hundreds of things that are all supposed to be happening together and then they run into each other and they break everything and it's horrible. And that is what programming is. It is a process of managing complexity. Um, and so I'm really excited in a really funny way. I'm extremely excited that we have reached the point where we just have some complexity that we're going to need to manage. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, we are going to just keep on adding features, keep on making our code better, um, because this is built from scratch. It is the uh, series where we make for ourselves, starting from a little blank scratch project, just a little scratch cat. Um, we are gonna make a game where we fly a starship around a vast universe um, and go and to extraordinarily uh, extraordinary great new exciting places and do. Um, exciting new things, flying around in starships and visiting aliens and picking up resources and proving our starships and, you know, in doing intergalactic trading and who knows what else. Um, all of that is for the future. What we have now is managing complexity, um, cleaning up our code. Let's jump right into it. But before actually I said that, uh, I just said let's jump right into it, but let's not actually jump right into uh, com cleaning up our code because there is one bug that we're going to have to fix. Um, before I do any of that, of course, I uh, I am cur currently have episode four, Visiting Star Systems, open. Um, you can get to any of my projects uh, by visiting my Scratch page. Um, I am username uh, built from scratch uh, with underscores there, and you can look, go to any of the projects here. Um, but uh, I'm going to jump into episode four, Visiting Star Systems. I'm going to see inside. Um, you can do the same thing if you're following along uh, with the code. And I am going to first things first, save as a copy, and I'm going to give this a new name. Uh, episode four, Visiting Star Systems copy is not a great name. Episode five, and I am just going to do it. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to call it uh, Managing Complexity. Um, I think that's a fun name. Um, we're going to clean up the code like I said we would, but as I said, before we clean up the code, we are going to fix one bug. Because um, there was a, 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 something that didn't work very well about our program last time, right? When last we, when last we met, uh, we could fly into these stars, we could go, and then we could leave them. But sometimes, if you tried to leave a star, you would just appear, um, you know, you'd flash in, you'd flash into interstellar mode, and then you'd go back into star system mode. And we kind of had this little kludgy, uh hack here where we just said, well, what if we don't go to zero, zero? Um, then we definitely can enter and leave stars, but then we off-center our camera and it's bad. And look at that, we just teleported from one star to another. It's not good. That was not a good system. We just wanted to demonstrate that it works, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Well, I'm going to say go to zero, zero, because that's where we want. But what we really want to do is we want to make there be some kind of, like, cooldown. Um, some kind of thing where, briefly, after we leave a star system, we can't enter another star system for like a second or something. Um, so to do that, we're going to have a variable that keeps track of whether we can or cannot leave a star system. And we're going to have, a, just like we had our entering star system event that we broadcasted, we're going to make a leaving star system event that we broadcast so we can handle all of these things. So I'm going to go to data. I'm going to make a variable. Uh, it's going to be for all sprites, and it's going to be called something extremely um, uh, verbose, I'm going to say player can enter star system, star systems. Uh, let's make star systems two words, 
just because. It's going to be for all sprites because this player is going to set it and the stars are going to want to know it, but also I just kind of feel like maybe other things are going to care about it as well. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm just changed my whole opinion. I'm going to delete this variable. I'm going to delete it. Unfortunately, you cannot make a for this sprite. You, you cannot take change a variable from being for this sprite. Um, and I'm just going to call it for, I'm going to make it for this sprite only. I'm going to say can enter star systems um, because I've decided that the player will be the one that sets it. Uh, everything else can read it using the, the sensing block we did before. So player ship can enter star systems. Um, we want to, by default, we're going to set it to true. Um, and you could use 0 and 1 for these, um, true and false. You could use anything. I like to just use true and false in all capital letters. So set can enter star systems to true. Um, when we leave our star system, right, if game mode is solar, if we're flying around the stars, uh, if, we, if game mode is solar and we are touching the edge, we're going to set it to interstellar because we're going to leave the star system. And we are going to uh, need to do this broadcast, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to go to events here, and I'm going to broadcast. And instead of broadcasting entering star system, I'm going to broadcast leaving star system. Um, and it's funny, because I'm building this broadcast here. At the moment, the only thing I actually want to listen to it is still going to be our ship here. Um, so I'm going to need another when I receive. Uh, it's funny that the, it's broadcasting to itself, but I think this is still the key, cleanest way to do it. When I receive leaving star system, I'm going to do two things. I'm, well, I'm, going, to do, I'm going to set can enter star systems to false. And then I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to wait some amount of time. That's going to be in control here. There's this wait one seconds. Um, and uh, I'm going to then go ahead and set it to true again. Set can enter star systems to true. Um, this one seconds, it's just a number. It's just a one. I don't want it to be a one. I don't like magic numbers. You don't like magic numbers. No one wants magic numbers in their programming. We always want numbers to have labels that show their meaning. Um, so, we're going to wait one second, but we're not going to wait one second. We're going to wait, uh, it's going to be for this sprite only, it's going to be like star system cooldown. Uh, uh, sure, star system cooldown, is that a terrible name? It might be a terrible name. I might want to change it later. Um, I'm going to set it to one here now, and I'm going to wait that amount of time, right? Um, when I receive leaving star system, uh, set it to false, wait a second, set it to true. Why did I do this using this event? That's a fine question. I'm so glad you asked. It seems like I should not need to use the event because it seems like I should be able to just do that down here, right? Why am I broadcasting to myself? Well, the reason I'm broadcasting to myself is because I don't want the wait one seconds in here. I don't want to wait here because that would stop the flow of this whole loop. It would wait after it did this, um, it would wait before it did anything else. So while our, so our ship would actually just be paused for a second, um, it wouldn't be able to move for a second, and so we'd st still have the bug and we'd have this weird jittery thing in our code. So in, what I'm doing here is I'm starting like another process that's gonna be able to wait one second while this other stuff is running. Um, so that's really great. Um, let's go ahead and test it. Um, so I'm gonna go here, can enter star system, true. Gonna go there. Um, uh, it's still true, and I'm going to say go, and it becomes false, and that's great. Um, it becomes false for a second, but actually I'm not doing anything with that piece of information, right? I'm just saying I've named a thing, I've labeled it can and cannot enter star systems, but actually that name that I gave it, that labeled, is meaningless until I write some code around it, right? So if you make a variable, you should probably be writing some code. I'm going to go to test star here, and before I enter a star system, which is here, right, if touching player ship, um, before I enter a star system, I am going to check whether I can. So if touching player ship and um, if touching player ship and can enter star systems equals true. Um, so if touching player ship and can enter star systems, um, but of course that was, I decided to make it a variable that was a local variable for the player and not a global variable. So I have to access it using this uh, special sensing block here, um, down here, the thing of thing block. And I'm going to say if can 
enter star systems of player equals true, do that. So now I will only enter star systems if I actually can. So now I'm here entering star ID and then I can leave and I can't enter star systems for a little while. Um, I thought I uh, can't enter star systems with true, I should leave and it's false and then it becomes true again. And um, false and then true. Um, so maybe this cooldown is just not quite long enough, right? I'm still, I'm still not necessarily leaving in time. So let's go ahead and let's just make the cooldown a little bit longer. And is that the problem? It seems like that's the problem. Um, it's true, leave, and then it's false. Um, leave, and then it is false. And then it becomes true again. Um, all right, well, that seems to seem to work. Okay, maybe I will make the cooldown just a little longer. Um, the real pro, yeah, well, hmm. seems the real problem is a little more complex, and it's really that uh, if I if I leave, it becomes false, and then it becomes true. But if I leave, if I enter, and then I Like I'm, I'm leaving. What is? Um, uh, so let's see. Um, there's this weird bug here, and I'm not actually 100% sure of what's going on. Um, it seems like it's not necessarily triggering at the right order. Um, it's sort of mostly working, but then sometimes it isn't. Um, what if I go ahead and I just, I'm gonna make this broadcast, and then I'm gonna, just gonna do a thing. I'm gonna wait just a tiny fraction of a second um, before I go to that spot. I'm gonna wait a tiny fraction of a second, and then I think that should clean it up a bit. So now I'm gonna go here, I can fly away, and then it's false, and then it's true, and then everything is great. So what was happening is just that sometimes the I was going to the place and then hitting the thing before this broadcast actually ever managed to trigger um, and that was no good so here we go um, we fixed the bug and now we can leave the star systems uh, we can enter star systems and then we can leave and go about our wonderful delightful perfect uh, cosmic journey um, this is pretty great I think um, I'm gonna hit stop uh, I'm gonna go fix one more thing, just one more little thing, um, which is that if I, I want the star to be in the center, um, so I'm just gonna tell it to, if I am the star and I'm showing myself, I'm gonna go to zero, zero, much like I had the, the ship do before, right? So I, I want the camera centered, centered on the star here, so now, stars there and the ship go and awesome everything is totally completely fantastic about this program now um, and so I just fixed this bug I fixed it this bug came up and and then I got confused and then I fixed it and I want to just jump back to it because it's actually a pretty common thing that can happen in scratch what was happening is I was broadcasting leaving star system I was setting game mode to interstellar um, I was and then I was, and I was going to zero, zero. So I was going to zero, zero, um, and I was doing, setting can enter star systems to false, um, and then over here, uh, but, but this was happening, everything was happening at a slightly different rate, and so every once in a while, I would go to zero, zero, and I would be touching the thing, and can enter star systems would be getting set to false slightly after the touching happened. Um, and so that was bad. Uh, and so that's why I put this weight here. I put it between here and going to zero, zero. But actually, this stuff just doesn't want to be in this block of code at all. And this is the first, th we've now entered the managing complexity stage. Uh, awesome. Um, so this, this thing doesn't want to be in this block of code at all. 
if we have this leaving star systems thing, we may as well have everything that happens when we leave the star system happen here. We don't want it, some of it happening in this loop and some of this it happening over here. So instead, let's just say we don't go to zero, zero until after we've set it to false. So now it should fix that problem. Um, then we leave, and it does. Um, and that is good. Um, so now we can go from place to place just like we want to, uh, and everything is wonderful. And that is the first part of managing a Plexi, right? Um, is not spreading stuff over in lots of confusing places. Um, I really like this because we actually just say broadcast leaving star system. You know what? This set game mode to interstellar, that should also be here. We should also set game mode to interstellar here, right? All of these things all are all to go together. This is one thing, so let's keep it all together. So. That's the first part. The second part, well, uh, we're just going to keep fixing our code a little bit. The th what do I mean? I keep saying this code is like gnarly and hard to read and things like that. And what do I really mean? Um, code ugliness uh, can mean a lot of different things. Um, and so so we'll, we'll probably talk about it just, just a whole lot because actually, as I said before, um, Making your code work, uh, managing the complexity of your code, being able to read it, making it readable and workable is like a huge amount of what you do as a computer programmer. Um, in this case, what I don't like about it, it has a lot more to do with Scratch's interface than it does with the code itself. Um, I don't like how long this thing is because I find it hard to read Scratch code um, when it gets to be too big. So. I like to break scratch code up into smaller chunks so that I can find those chunks and know, know where the piece of code I'm looking for is. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this more blocks function. I'm going to make a block and I'm going to make a, two blocks for each of my things. And they're going to be called setup and they're going to be called loop. Um, and setup and loop, uh, this is going to be the first step and this is going to be extremely simple. I'm just going to take all of these things that are at the when flag clicked, I'm going to throw them in setup and put setup there. When flag clicked setup and then loop. Everything inside of this forever is going to go in loop. Um, and I'm going to say loop there. So when flag clicked setup, um, forever loop. Um, I'm going to do the same thing in test star. I'm going to make a block. I'm going to call it setup. I'm going to make a block. I'm going to call it loop. I'm going to say when flag clicked setup. And this is a little tricky. Um, you know what? I'm not going to do it. It's going to be slightly different because we're doing clones. So it's actually a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to make a third block and I'm going to call it generate stars. Um, and so when flag clicked, this is going to generate stars, right? All this stuff is making stars. When flag clicked, generate stars. Um, and then it's the clones that are going to have the setup and the loop stuff. So what is setup? Setup is going to be setting our costume and it's going to be, and then loop is going to be this, right? Um, when, flag, uh, when I start the clone setup, forever loop. Uh, hit cleanup, and already this code is actually slightly more readable. Um, and there's one more piece of breaking it down that I want to do. Um, I want to just, uh, I'm going to break this loop down into two different things, right? We basically have two different versions. We have something that, uh, um, in here we have, well, it's actually going to be different for all the blocks of code. This is not a big surprise. So uh, there's one thing we do, and one thing we do is we handle our key Im keyboard input. Um, well, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to zoom back because uh, again, I'm noticing that this is just taking longer than I wanted to. Um, I did get begin the process of cleaning this up, so that's just going to have to be enough probably for today. Um, we uh, we have cleaned up our code a little tiny bit. It is not the cleanest code in the world. So we are going to have to keep working on that as we develop. Um, but I did want to make sure, and I'm going to point it out again, this more blocks function, it's extremely simple. 
all we do, get, we just get to define a new block and we just say exactly what it does. So now all, all of our sprites, all of the things in our game are probably going to have something very similar. We're going to have a setup and a forever loop. One flag clicked setup, uh, one flag clicked setup, forever loop, and then we'll figure out what setup and loop are. Our code is easier to read now and it's just going to get better and better as we go on. But for now, um, we're going to call it a day. Uh, I have been talking for too long already. So managing complexity. Uh, episode 5, Managing Complexity. We've already titled it because I was so confident. Um, uh, but maybe I'll say partially because I didn't actually get to all the things that I really wanted. Um, although, of course, this partially should just permanently be, be you know, in our brains as nothing we ever do in our code is, base is complete up until the final thing is done. And then it's only complete because we just said, you know what, we're done. Um, managing complexity, partially. Um, I'm going to save it. I have saved it. I'm going to go to my stuff. I am going to share. No, I'm going to click on this. Uh, go to the project page. I'm going to click share. Um, and there you go. So. Uh, Thanks, that was really fun. Um, I'm really excited to keep on trucking through it with you guys. And that was it. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, ideas, uh, send me a message on Scratch. I am built from scratch with underscores between the words. And I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.